the memories of my late mother, who was a wonderful cook, really excellent. You know, she was competent and meticulous, but she was also very adventurous, which tends not to go with competent and meticulous as a rule. So, you know, mealtimes were always interesting and always pleasurable and always a bit of an adventure. There were also times when the family got together, you know, even when we were fighting, we were still all sitting around the dinner table and we were still all in, engaged with, with each other. Also, of course, food was special for special occasions, birthdays, Christmas, Easter, things like that. But mainly it was to do with my mum and, and what a wonderful cook she was. I'm one of three sisters. I'm the middle sister of three. And I was the only one of us who was interested when I was a small child in in cooking or learning to cook or helping to cook. So I spent many happy hours in the kitchen with my mum following her around, watching what she was doing, um, listening to her very patiently explain what she was doing. And as I got older, letting me help do things like cut out biscuits or, you know, with the cookie cutters or, or whatever, roll out dough, things like that. The very first thing I ever learned to make by myself was meringues. And I wanted to learn to make meringues because they were so magical and gorgeous. And I think my mother saw this as an opportunity to teach me how to separate an egg. And to this day I can still separate an egg with one hand. Um, but I loved meringues because they were so beautiful. And, and I used to play with food colouring and make pink ones and hideous purple ones and completely disgusting green ones. <laughs> I also have a very vivid memory of, of making my father's 37th birthday cake. Um, I, I must have been 10. Um, and it was a round cake, a round chocolate cake for my father's 37th birthday. And I remember being very annoyed with him for being 37 instead of 36 because, of course, if he'd been 36, it would have been extremely easy to place the candles at regular intervals. I could have had, you know, 360 degrees in a circle and therefore a candle every 10 degrees. But because he was 37, it meant everything got thrown completely out of whack. But my main memories of, of helping to cook are, are simply, I think, of um, having my mother all to myself for hours at a stretch, and, and that was wonderful. I think children tend to have very simple pleasures, and very often those pleasures are associated with food, so they're going to be the most vivid things we, we remember. Um, and food is associated with so many other things, like love and routine, and special occasions like Christmas and birthdays and, and Easter. I think we remember special occasions and obviously we're going to remember the, the thing that marks them, which is usually special food, Easter eggs, Christmas pudding, um, birthday cake and so on. And certainly my mum's little recipe book um, is, is precious to everyone in the family now that she's you know been lost to us for 15 years now. But it was precious even while she was still alive and precious to her, you know, as well as to everybody else. I think because it, it recorded household history going back 50 years, basically. Those little scrapbooks are important, I think, as, as artefacts of history and especially of women's history because until very recently women lived such private, unrecorded lives that there were very few material traces of, of their, their lives. A recipe book like this is like having a, a sampler embroidered by your great-grandmother or something like that. The other thing is that we're living in an, an age where we value authenticity more and more as authenticity becomes easier and easier to fake with technology like Photoshop and things like that. So the thing about these sorts of recipe books is that they are unquestionably genuine. They're the real deal. You couldn't possibly fake them. Often also they're written in handwriting, which means that that evokes the physical presence of the, of the person who wrote them very strongly. Handwriting is, is a bit eerie. I think, in the way that it's, it, it almost brings up the ghost of the person who wrote it. And, of course, if you love the person who wrote it, then it's, it's of course, it's going to be valuable to you.